<laughs> hey guys, welcome to Glam Hive Live Digital Fall Summit. This is a spotlight on trends. I'm Jasmine Moye, and I'm so excited to be featuring some incredible Glam Hive stylists with us today. These are style experts, and they really know what's on trend, what to buy into, and of course, what to avoid. We want to make sure to include you in the conversation. So if you do have any questions, please slide into the DM. Leave your questions and comments at any tech support request in the chat box. No, this is public and everyone can see what you're sending. And we'll do our best to include you in the conversation. Of course, address all of your questions in the last 10 minutes of this panel. The first 30 minutes, we'll have a great group conversation. And then again, of course, get to your questions at the end. We want to include you, of course, by using hashtag Glam Hive Live. Don't forget to follow Glam Hive as well. And we want to give a special thanks to our sponsors, Mary Kay and Mary Kay Global Design Studios, who truly celebrate worlds where beauty, fashion, and empowerment are synonymous. Mary Kay champions creative industries that are diverse, inclusive, and innovative at their core. So it was a no-brainer, of course, to make this strategic collaboration with Glam Hive. Okay, but enough of the housekeeping. Let's get right to what's on trend. I'm super excited to welcome Kelly with us today. She's a wardrobe expert, mix master of the high and low. We've got Kafia in the house, world champion, ballroom dancer, fashion stylist, image consultant, recognized by modern luxury as a woman of style. Of course, Andrea Lovin is in the house virtually, of course. Uh, stylist and fashion blogger known as the chic girl next door. And we've got Carson Love with us, stylist, wardrobe consultant, really a master of style snacks and saving animals. Hey, ladies, thanks so much for being with us today. Hi. Hi, everyone. So let's jump right in. Kelly, I would love to start with you. I know we just did a really fun interview on some of the season's hottest looks on Amazon, but what's your take on trends? Do you support them? And if yes, are they important to fashion or why well, not? I fully support them. And they are, they're so important. Absolutely. There's the woman wearing leopard too, by no, the way. I, so leopard is my neutral. <laughs> I wear it with everything and I have my whole life and I will continue to do so. So I, so it, to me, it's not a trend, but I, the trends are fun. You know, it's adding some excitement, experiencing something new and different to your basic style and whatever that may be. So I'm a I huge fan. I, I am as well. Clearly, I'm rocking the cold shoulder, one shoulder, chunky, oversized sweater today, of course, thanks to your recommendation. Katya, what's your take on trends? Do you support them and how important are they to fashion? So I think uh, for me, it's uh, also important to make a distinction between the trends and fads because not everything that is new and out there on the store shelves will become a trend. So if we're talking about some trends that will stay with us for a long, long, long time, absolutely. It's a great way to bring a modern touch to your wardrobe. So I absolutely love them. As you can see, I'm wearing a knit dress um, that has been pretty, uh, pretty trendy these days and some uh, gold chunk jewelry. However, like I say, you know, I think our, um, our um, job as a stylist is to help navigate uh, through those trends and fads so our clients can make better decisions. Andrea, the chic girl next door, what's your take? I mean, I think trends are really important. Um, not all trends are important for everybody, but I do think trends are important. I mean, it keeps us updated, it keeps us buying, it keeps the economy going. And I think, especially right now, they're a great distraction um, from everything else that's going on in this world. And you know, you can look forward to seeing what's new and what you can update in your wardrobe. So I think trends are great, but not all trends. The right trends for each person. Which brings up a very interesting point. So when should a person walk away from a trend? And when should they invest? How do they navigate the difference? I mean, I feel that a person should not invest a trend when it does not make them feel their absolute best. I mean, they have to understand when they look in the mirror, is this making me feel good? And if it's not making them feel good, they need to skip it. And that's hard to do sometimes, you know? Sometimes you've got to let things go. Like if, if it's too young for you or if it's a too old of a trend, you've got to say, this is not for me and you've got to let it go. Carson, what's your take on trends? Take them, leave them, 
Yeah, I agree with everyone that they're super important. I certainly don't think they should be in the driver's seat of, you know, what we purchase and what we fill our closets with. But um, as like a fashion nerd, I think that they're so important because it's kind of what we all love about fashion, what's so fascinating about it. Um, it's how we can uh, see what's relevant with the times. I think um, a lot of people don't stop to think about how trends are really affected by um, cultural happenings, economic happenings, you know, it's kind of how we can study history through clothes, um, which again is kind of nerdy, but I think really cool. Um, and it's also what keeps things fresh coming from designers. You know, I think fashion and trends is kind of what designers serve us four times a year. Um, but style is something that's a little bit more internal. So I think whenever you pair those two things together and kind of know how to navigate them in a way that makes sense for your lifestyle, that's whenever they can be so fun and so beneficial and kind of keep the uh, momentum and the journey of your own personal style moving forward instead of just getting stuck or stuck in a rut, for sure. Are there ever times when you advise a client to steer away from a trend? Oh yeah, I mean, and I think it's, um, just kind of goes back to adding anything if anything's going to take up real estate in their closet i want it to be versatile and make sense for their lifestyle their body type just their personal taste um so for me it always goes back to cost per wear you know how many times do they see themselves wearing it so if they're going to spend you know a, a, a larger investment on a piece. Of course, we want it to be worn more times, but you know, if it's just something that they're trying out, maybe it's a, a trendy pattern or, or color in something low investment, like a headband, then then sprinkle it in as, as much as you want, as much as you feel comfortable. Uh, but I think it all goes back for me, cost per wear, fit and functionality. Hmm. Well said, three very important things. Kathy, what's your favorite trend you've lived through and why? Oh, I would have to say that would be a kitten heel. So that trend has been in rotation in 50s, 60s, 90s, and thank God it is in rotation again right now because I am a huge fan of kitten heels. So there's two things I love about it. It's the comfort that it gives, uh, just as you would wear a flat shoe, but also gives you that class and sexiness of the stiletto. And, you know, my personal style, it's all about elegance, all about chic. I like to, I like to be feminine. So definitely Hidden Hill gives me, you know, the best of both worlds where I can still be comfortable, but that, you know, I won't compromise my style. Shelly, what about you? Your favorite trend you've lived through and why? I mean, I, I just think back to the 80s when, you know, I was younger and I got to go through the neons, the tight rolling, and I feel like those things are still coming back now. And I love it. So I lived through them and I'm ready for more of that. Andrea, what about you? Your favorite trend you've lived through? I'm by far the high rise gene. For me, it can't get high enough. Um, and it's something I've seen all through the decades. I mean, we dabbled into the low rise thing, but I'm so glad that's gone. Um, I've never, I'm yet to see one person that's not flattering on a high rise. It just keeps everything in, everybody's comfortable. It actually makes your top look better. Um, I'm seeing it from, you know, tweens all the way up to whatever. It is by far the best trend for all women out there, I believe now. Are there any trends you're surprised that have lasted this long? Well, don't get offended, but I, I'm honestly surprised Leopard has never gone away. <laughs> I mean, it is, I guess as you're right, it's not a trend anymore. I mean, it is here to stay. And you think, oh, because it's such a bold print that it would be something that kind of came and, and went, but it just never goes away. And I have to say the right Leopard is, is right on like yours. It's I almost wore Leopard today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, to the woman who is rocking Leopard Shelly, are there any trends that you're surprised who have lasted this long? Who lasted this long? Gosh, I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, that's a good well, I, one. Yeah, please go jump in. I think for me, it would be jeggings. I mean, uh, honestly, I really uh, don't think that jeggings are, are flattering on any woman over 30. You know, our body's changing and uh, jeggings have this beautiful skill, you know, um, to show all the imperfections. So jeggings definitely is, for me, it's a one that must go. I don't think any of us 
would disagree. <laughs> Carson, uh, what is your favorite fashion trend of quarantine? Birkenstocks, biker shorts, tie-dye, matching sets. And do you think any of these trends will last? Okay, so kind of like to piggyback off what they were just, I was going to say, as I was sitting here listening to y'all's answers, I was thinking, oh, what trend am I surprised by that has lasted this long? And truly, I think I'm surprised that it even came about is the biker shorts. I mean, yes, they look adorable on some, but I think whenever a trend is so um, uh, market specific, like whenever it's so such a niche age range and such a niche style specific, I'm always surprised whenever it lasts longer than like an instant, you know, because once those people grow out of it, it's dead. So I'm surprised that, you know, we're still seeing like I mean, I've seen people like dressing up biker shorts and stuff, and I'm, I'm surprised we're still seeing that. But, um, oh, quarantine trends that I'm grateful for would be just all the better like little loungewear sets that like all, it seems like every every favorite brand or every, every favorite knitwear brand now is making like cute little matching sets. And it used to be like not the easiest thing to find. Like, you know, maybe you could find like cute, like, uh, pajamas or something and then uh, like favorite knits where it's like you could find the top and then you could find the bottom but like I'm kind of grateful that they're selling them together now and that's because I do love those and I do think if you're going to do loungewear it's nice to have something that's like at least a little cohesive and feels a little bit elevated and special so I love the little I love the little loungewear matching sets for sure. Andrea what about you favorite trends of quarantine and any that will last? Well I mean, I live in LA, so we were really ready for quarantine fashion because we already live in casual clothes. I mean, it's for us, it's athleisure, it's twin sets. I mean, this was happening years ago. So I am thrilled of what, I mean, like, I'm not thrilled, but I feel right in my element <laughs> in pandemic clothes. Um, and it's just getting better through this whole thing. I mean, the athleisure stuff I'm seeing is it's just, it's so elevated, it's so cute. So for me, this is a trend that I'm I'm loving and I'm going with for sure, is these cute sports bras, um, high-waisted yoga pants, um, cute little puffer jackets. It's great. I mean, I don't even think this is athleisure anymore. I think this is a street style now. So um, jumping in that realm, yeah. How would you recommend up-leveling kind of the legging athleisure that so many of us ladies in LA have been wearing now for years? You know what? It is what it is. I mean, in LA, everybody is wearing that with their, you know, their fancy handbag and their jewelry and their, their great shoes and a blow dry. I mean, it is what it is that you can't style it much more than it is, but you can keep, um, it can keep evolving and there's so many new colors and so many new prints and I, you know, or you, I see a lot of like cute, these little cute crop um, sports bra types with blazers. There's things there, you know, leggings with um, a boot, you can do things, but for the most part, I think you just got to ride with what it is right now. And it's the most, it's, it's, it's a very cute look and it's practical. I mean, it's really, there's not a day that doesn't go on right now where you're not going to need to work out, take, take, walk the dog and look cute at the same time. And I think that that athleisure does all those things and still makes you feel good. So I wouldn't try so to do too much. Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite trend of quarantine? And do you I'm, think say, well, I'm a Birkenstock girl. <laughs> I had foot surgery years ago and I was, I was buying them back then. And now they're finally, now I have dozens of options now that they're on trend. And I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. Huge fan. Uh, I think I have a collection of eight now and I wear them all the time. I love them. I so, love that comfortable is chic now. Yes, I mean, I couldn't be more grateful for that. Right, and I wear them casually around the house or to work out and then tie-dye. I mean, I love tie-dye. It's so fun and creative. And I love that people can do it on their own DIY. And I don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon. We have a question from one of our audience members. Bianca wants to know about denim jackets. What's your take on them and the best way to style? Oh, I, every girl needs a denim jacket. Um, a dark denim, a light denim. I love the cropped um, and styling them. I mean, I would style them with my joggers as we, you know, similar to my Amazon joggers. Mm -hmm. So you can throw it on this look 
um, throw it on with a rocker tee, a skirt. The jacket goes with everything. And so and look. So in, I, I'm not a huge favor of uh, uh, jean jackets. However, if I was to style one, I think you can really uh, use it as a replacement of your leather jacket, which you know you can put it on like a knit dress. You know, use some great jewelry, a nice um, sandal, and you look really great put together. Speaking of sandals, what's your favorite quarantine trend? Are you a Birkenstock fan, tie-dye, matching set? Uh, I'm gonna say it will be the matching set, just like Carson said. I think one of the things that I love about this trend is that it's a classic and it will stay with us for a long time, way longer than the quarantine will. And it's the easiest trend to really dress it up with jewelry, gray back and gray shoes. So that definitely is uh, one of my favorite trends during the quarantine. Carson, I'm wondering, in your opinion, what the most popular slash successful trend at retail is right now and why you think that is? Um, well, you know, I don't, this is kind of more of an industry trend, I suppose, but just whenever um, you said in retail, the first thing for me that comes to mind is um, I feel like the trend of these rental companies and having the options of rentals, I've just seen like exploded and, and great gain a bunch of traction, I think over the last few years, but I think it's become even more popular now during quarantine and people are looking for like more sustainable, more economical options. Um, and I, I mean, I hope that it keeps growing. Like as a stylist who doesn't really like to shop for herself that often, I, it's, it helps me a ton. Um, I think it's a great option. Um, it helps me learn about different designers without having to like purchase things. But, you know, of course, companies like Rent the Runway have been around for a long time. Um, but I've noticed even uh, already established retailers are now adding like a rental avenue. So, um, you know, I think there's like, there's like in-store, there's e-com, and I think this kind of rental avenue is just going to be another player in the retail industry as a whole. And I think it's really great because as we all know, like the fashion industry, unfortunately, I think it's, what is it like second only next to oil as far as like water waste and, and stuff, as far as like the most wasteful in, uh, industry. So um, I think it's a great solution. I hope, I hope that's a trend that keeps growing and keeps going and doesn't fade away is the whole rental rental avenue for clothing. Andrea, I know we've been talking a lot about athleisure. Do you find that that's the most popular successful trend at retail in your opinion right now? Um, well, yeah, I do. But there's also some a little higher fashion stuff that, that I'm seeing the most being faux leather. I'm really, really into it for a lot of reasons. First, um, it's obviously way more eco-friendly um, than real leather. Um, it looks great. I mean, I think it's doing the same exact thing as leather, but actually it may be even a little bit more flexible. And and I looks like see these pencil skirts I'm seeing, um, these leather, faux leather trousers. It looks good and the price is right. So right now that is a trend that I think is on fire and not gonna go away for a long time. You mentioned the pencil skirt. Is that your favorite faux leather item you would say that you know is a must add this season? That or the trouser. That is like, when I say the trouser like that, like the trouser that has like the paper bag trouser, a high-waisted trouser, both pencil skirts and the trousers look great in faux leather. Great. So those are my, they're, they're like a tie. Great pro tip. Thank you. Shelly, what about you? What is the most kind of popular successful trend that you're seeing in retail right now? When I hit the sales floor at Nordstrom, for instance, um, the matching athleisure sets are just taking over the floor. So in the lingerie department, they've literally tripled the real estate for matching casual sleep sets. And they're literally, it's tripled in size since last year on the floor. So I think that's the largest like visual change I've seen in trends with athleisure quarantine. Interesting. And, and Cassia, what about you? I think there are a few trends that I've been seeing uh, taking them um, hit really well. So that would be the oversized blazers, which is one of my favorite as well. I think for the um, for its um, versatility purposes, I mean, you can literally tr throw over uh, over um, size blazer on anything. I mean, you can put it on over the party dress. You can um, you can uh, uh, put it over the at leisure and still look great and put together. That's the way I would dress it when I you know if I'm going from the gym to a grocery 
uh, store, I would still put the blazer over to feel like I'm myself. Um, and I think also another trend that it's really having a great popularity right now, it's, it's all the knits. So the knit dresses and knit tops, uh, I think, uh, you know, they're super comfortable, but they also look great on everyone. So I think those two would be um, the biggest trends that I would notice that are right now very popular. Carson, do you think it's okay to be kind of a trend obsessed? Do you think that creates a kind of fashion community? Is a way to celebrate seasonality? What's your take on trend obsession? So I personally uh, choose style first and I'm not really that obsessed with trends. I definitely use them to uh, update my wardrobe and I definitely um, you know, like to try new things as well. So I, I appreciate trends, but I always put person first and make it a focal point and not the trend. So I personally am not ob trend obsessed. However, you know, I totally appreciate all, ever, all other people who love to join the community and you have all the influencers and, you know, you see how they like to uh, stay on top of it. So I totally appreciate it. When it comes to me, I'm definitely not super uh, trend obsessed, but I do use it to, you know, update my look, definitely. Carson, what's your take on trend obsession? Do you think it creates community or creates a divide? Um, you know, I think like anything else, it can be a double-edged sword a little bit. I do think that paying attention to trends and um, appreciating them can be such a way to stay connected to the fashion industry. And kind of like I was saying before, kind of staying relevant to like cultural happenings and, um, you know, noticing things like what street styles taking from designers versus what designers are taking from street style. And, um, but kind of like I said before, I don't think it should be the in the driver's seat of where we spend all of our money in our closet. Um, I think it can kind of be a way to update and sprinkle in variety, but I think staying true to um, the baseline of, of what's true to you and what's work what works for your lifestyle is most important. And then if there's ways that make sense to inject those trends, um, then certainly having fun with those and you know wherever you feel comfortable is great. Um, but I think there's no harm in like noticing them, you know what I, you know, and almost using them as like as like case studies of what's going on and um, appreciating kind of what designers are serving to us. I, I don't think there needs to be like that external pressure to participate in all of them if they don't make sense to you. Um, but I do love kind of being aware of them and more, I guess, maybe the the art form of them or like the delivery of them. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Completely. <laughs> Andrea, I'm very curious your take on this as well, on kind of trend obsession and how you've seen people kind of make it their own. How would you recommend doing that? Paying homage to the trend, but really making it your own. Right. Um, you've got to just really, there's so much coming at us all of the time. I mean, between the Instagram or the, you know, the Facebook, the magazines, you've got to, you just have to be strong and know what's going to work for you. So, I mean, you, you, I feel like they're a great thing for community, meaning like it's fun to go out to lunch with your girls and talk about the new stuff you're seeing. And do you like this? And do you like that? And that, and, and to get everybody out and shopping to see what's new, but um, you've got to, you know, take it, take only do what really works for you and what makes you feel good. I mean, not every trend is flattering on everybody. So um, if you try it and it just, if it's not working, you got to be okay with, letting it go. And that's, that's not an easy thing to do. I understand because everybody wants to feel relevant um, and feel like they have the latest of everything, but some things are just not for everybody. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Yes, it, it does create community, but I do think sometimes it can make people feel bad if they can't figure out how to work it into their own lives. Um, and there is no styling trick to every trend. I mean, every trend just doesn't work for everybody. That's it. You know, with different body types, different ages, and um, you just got to know when it works for you and when it doesn't. Kelly, what's your, your take on friend of the community? I mean, my favorite thing is that you can get it at any price point now. So pretty much, for instance, say a jogger, you can get it at a $20 price point and try it. 
or you can invest in it if you think it's best for you and your body and your style. So that's my favorite thing. You can dip into it with a little investment, or if you feel like you're definitely ready to invest in this trend, you can go deep into a designer piece if you're into it, if it's best for you. So definitely. So one of our viewers wants to know where you invested that for that top. Where did you get it? I got this at Intermix. So this is just, it's Ghani. So it wasn't a huge investment, but I've already worn it. This is my second season. I've probably definitely gotten my money's worth and I wear it so many different ways. And so it's just really, you know, mixing high and low with your trends. You're the master of that. Katia, <laughs> I'm very curious. What is your favorite trend right now? And how would you ideally style it? Um, okay, so I think like I mentioned uh, just moments ago, that favorite trend would be the oversized blazer and, you know, I would have like two different outfits with it. If I would go uh, for dinner, I would put it over a nice sexy dress and it kind of, you know, I love the mascu masculine and feminine uh, uh, aspect to it. So I would put it with, with a sexy dress with nice sexy heel great jewelry. So that would be my uh, evening outfit Outfit if I would go to a party, although we don't go out that much right now, but in a great scenario sometime after the quarantine is over. And, or, you know, um, we all have right now plenty of skinny jeans because that was the past decade that we all, you know, collected numerous amounts of it. So I think we all can bring the skinny jean up to life with oversized blazer and put it, you know, if you want to be casual, just to wear it with a simple t-shirt, some uh, layered uh, jewelry, and um, I would personally put it with a nice uh, heel, maybe even the hidden heel, so it would still stay comfortable, but a little bit more uh, elegant. Or um, I would maybe, uh, you know, put it over active wear and some, uh, you know, some tennis shoe and run to the store. So I would have a few different ways uh, how I could use that oversized blazer. So that would be my favorite trend, I would say, uh, only because I'm all about a sustainability and definitely I like to keep, you know, stuff uh, super versatile in my closet. I, I don't love the one-offs, you know, buy something and just, you know, have it with one outfit. I always, whenever I go for a trend, I, I, I think, uh, I try to think, okay, how many different ways I can wear it. So if it makes sense, if I can wear it a few different occasions, awesome, I'm buying it. If it's only one, then I, I, I pass. I know many stylists say, as long as you can wear an item at least three different ways, then it would yeah. be worth your investment. Yeah, 100% is the rule of three. Uh, and not like, you know, the same type of outfit three ways, you know, because you can, you know, you can wear it with three different party dress, right? Well, that doesn't make, you know, that rule. So you have to have it for three different occasions in your lifestyle. So that's for me is how I go by, you know, if I would have a bigger closet, maybe my thinking would have changed, but I don't. <laughs> so I have to keep it super compact. Thank you for sharing that. Andrea, what's your favorite trend right now and how would you ideally style it? I mean, hands down, my favorite trend is puff sleeves right now. Um, I'm like- Obviously. I mean, hello. Yeah. I, like if I don't have, if I'm not wearing them, I like literally miss them. I'm like, I'm naked. I'm something is missing. Where are my wings? Yeah. Where are my wings? I don't know. So, um, that is number one for me. And I feel like you can wear them. I mean, in every single way they can be dressed up obviously for a night out, um, or they can be super casual during the day. Um, they're super zoom friendly, which we're all doing now. So it's another good thing. Um, but yeah, I just feel like they're fun and they're light and that's kind of what we need right now we just need a little puff so I love that Carson what's your favorite trend right now and how would you ideally style it um let me think I mean all the ones that they've already mentioned big fan as well um one thing that goes in trends and goes in waves that I think sometimes we kind of forget about because it happens so subtly is um what body parts are kind of considered sexy or are revealed. So like, you know, remember several years ago, whenever it's like the little cutout of like the rib was super sexy or like, you know, back in like a uh, flapper area, that's whenever hem lines were just starting to come up and everyone thought legs were like so scandalous. Um, I'm kind of, like, this is total personal preference. I'm 
I love that like midi dresses and midi skirts and longer hemlines have felt really current um, because I just, that's what I feel more comfortable in. I'm not a legs girl. I would rather have like a long flowy skirt. So I've been grateful for all the longer hemlines um, kind of being the current the current trend, but you know, just like anything else, I'm sure that'll move away <laughs> soon enough and, and it'll be on to the next thing. What's your favorite way to style something that is a longer hemline, perhaps like a, a high-waisted maxi skirt are you wearing, a knee-high boot, an ankle boot, a crop? So um, I don't know if anyone else, any other stylists do this, but whenever I know I'm going to be working in certain in environments, I feel like I kind of have like a uniform. So like if I know I'm going to be on set or if I know I'm going to be shopping all day and like on that horrible like tile concrete floor, like I already know I'm like in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm wearing sneakers that day. So I feel like part of my, um, and I live in Nashville too. So I think sometimes maybe regionality is different, but all summer long and like even going into fall, like long midi dresses and sneakers were like my shopping and on set uniform for sure. Shelly, what about you? What's your favorite trend okay. right now? And how are you styling it? Back to Carson's. The sneaker is, is, is everything right now. Um, my clients are buying sneakers. They're not buying, you know, pumps or heels, um, sneakers and boots. So the sneaker, I style it with everything. It's sort of one of my signature uniforms, you know, a golden goose with a dress, you know, mixing, a, mixing and matching the duality of a floral dress and a funky sneaker. I love that look. I'm just elevating sneakers. So mostly like designer sneakers, um, really unique ones that are out there. And there's so many new ones coming out and they're just comfortable, effortless, easy. So I think every client needs that. And you can style them so many different ways. Jeans, joggers, they go everywhere. To dinner, <laughs> to the gym, day, <laughs> day right. night. I love it. I'm so I'm grateful cool. for the sneaker trend personally. Right? I had lived my life in stilettos from, you know, the studio to the red carpet. And now that I can live my life in designer sneakers, thank you, Golden Goose and Alexander McQueen. I really want to open it up to any kind of viewer questions we have right now. So now is the time. If you have any comments or questions for these incredible stylists, let me know. I'm going to check the message boards as each of them share where they get their style inspiration. Andrea, I'd love to start with you. Where do you get your inspiration? Is it the runway? Is it models, influencers, magazines? Where do you find your style? Um, I still get it in the stores. I have to say, I, I think every time I'm like, when I'm scrolling Instagram or when I'm on a, you know, a shopping website, I'm like, I'm super smart. No, when I go to the stores is like really where I get, it comes to life for me, where I get to touch it. I get to see it. Um, I get to feel it. It, it just, for me, it's so refreshing, um, still to be in the stores. So that for me is, is, is number one. Mm, I miss it. Carson, what about you? Where do you get your style and stuff? Oh man, you know, I get, I've been asked this question in the past and I need to have like a better go-to answer. I feel like it's actually a very hard question because like as stylists, I think we're sometimes kind of like chameleons in that way. And we kind of like pay attention to, and we're exposed to so many different styles all the time. Um, it's hard and I hate to like give such a like blanket horrible answer but like truly everywhere like um stores and retail for sure designers for sure but like you know like and this is not like currently but like travel like even just going and sitting in an airport and seeing people come from different regions and different cities is so inspiring you know going to different places seeing different places working with different types of women who work in different industries and seeing um you know effects that that has i mean just like truly everywhere <laughs> Cassia, where do you find your style inspiration I think I would have two answers to it. So one is uh, some archives, photos and movies and films because I love how it has been done in the past and I always find inspiration in it. And it's not so much from the way things were put together but more so from the feel that it would give me and um, what kind of message, you know, was trying to be uh, conveyed during those times. And then, so that's kind of where I would draw some of my inspirations. and. That would also be very helpful with any fashion stories that I would do for magazines. So that, that part of me kind of follows me through my personal style. And also from just my life. I mean, you know, every day we wake up and we have to tackle the day. And, you know, I always ask myself, myself a question, 
Uh, and it's not the question, how do I feel today? But it's the question, how do I want to feel today? You know, what is on my agenda for today? And how do I want to feel doing it? So if I have something super important on the, on the, on the agenda, then, you know, I'm like, okay, I have to make myself feel that so I can tackle on it. So I would, you know, dress maybe a little bit more professional. If I have my stepkids and I know that I'm going to be spending half the month, half my day in the car, driving from school to school and different activities, obviously pre-COVID and after COVID, you know, that would be my life. Then I know I have to be super comfortable. So I will tap in into, you know, like how do I make this comfortable look still, you know, portray me as a person. So it's not uh, just throwing whatever because that would never make me feel good. It's always, you know, it's always start with the question, how do I feel good? How do I want to feel good? Well, I hope you feel good today because you look great. Well, thank you. Shelly, where do you find your style in, in style? I find most of mine on Instagram through the lens, looking at celebrities, looking at influencers, seeing what they're doing. And I normally will screenshot, you know, whether it's a look or it's an item that I want to buy for a specific client or for myself. I'll save it in an album for that client or myself and, and just use it as an inspiration. I want to recreate this look that say, you know, celebrity is done. I'll just screenshot and save it. That's my go-to. So we have a question from one of our viewers who would love some pro advice on creating a waistline. She's very petite and has trouble with that. Any advice? Oh, well, the right, uh, first of all, the right bra, you know, we've got to lift up the girls to then create the hourglass shape. And back to what Andrew said, high waist pulling up the waist, high waist looks great on everybody and it cinches in and it'll balance her more, lifting up her breast, high-waisted jeans, it'll balance her more and create more of an hourglass. I think using belts as well can, you know, bring, um, can accentuate the waistline. It depends how you do it, but if you're really centered uh, in the waistline, definitely will work. So belts would be my advice when, when it comes to accessories. Andrea, any advice on addressing trends for petite women? I agree with both of them. The high rise jeans and, and belts are just both <laughs> um, super important for the waist. And for petite women, you have to, you have to find a good tailor who's going to have your jeans right. I mean, they're not all the same. Um, and you've got to find one who can really do an original hem, um, who can make your jeans look like they're made for your body, not like you hemmed your jeans because you're shorter than, or you're more petite than, um, you know, other women. So just investing in, in the right alterations and then adding in the right accessories, like um, a right bra um, and a, a good belts. For petite Carson, women. any style advice for petite women? Yeah, um, like I would be curious to know if she knows what her own body type is and that's not to peg her in a hole at all. I think um, it can be helpful to kind of recognize your own body type. And it's important to know that you can be any shape and any body type and also be a petite. You know, you can be any shape and also be a plus or, you know, anywhere on the spectrum. Um, I think sometimes like recognizing and, and um, really knowing what your body type and your body shape is can be really helpful because it's I think it's always our goal when dressing different body types recognizing balance so you know um where you carry most of your weight um just being really cognizant of how you dress to create balance um and also remembering too our eye is always going to be drawn to wherever there's a straight line so I think she was asking about creating a waistline um just make sure wherever you are creating that straight line, be it with a belt or, or a tuck or a, a waistline of a pant or a skirt or whatever it is, just uh, making sure it's on the smallest part of your natural waist, not the widest part. I think, and that can go back to fit too and things not fitting properly. I think sometimes, you know, on petites, and any one sizing can be so hard, but especially on petites, you know, things kind of fall down or maybe they don't fit upright exactly where they're supposed to. So just always make sure wherever there's a straight line, it's it's where you want the eye to go and not where you don't want it to go. And that can go for the bottom of the pant too. You know, I'm never gonna want a petite to be in like a crop pant that cuts clear across the widest part of their calf because it's the widest part of their leg. Why would I want to put the line there? So um yeah, paying attention to the lines and, and knowing your own body type and creating balance. And 
a seconding the tailor it's so important i think for all women when it comes to mass manufactured clothing but when you get into specialty sizing just so so important Thank you all so much for your time, your talent, and your insight. Before we go, I'd like each of you to share your social media handles so everyone can be sure to follow you off this platform as well and continue to connect. Carson, let's start with you. Uh, I think I'm just at Carson M. Love. And then like my website's on there with all the Facebook and the emails and the, all that, that stuff. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. And Andrea, what about you? How can everyone continue to follow and support? Um, I'm Andrea's Lookbook uh, for women, and I also actually just launched Andrea's Lookbook Junior for girls. Oh, and congratulations! And, yeah, and that's on. Um, I have a website, andreaslookbook.com, and then Instagram is Andrea's Lookbook, Facebook, Pinterest, all that. Thank you, Cassia. How can we continue to follow and support? So all my contacts are on my Instagram. If you go, it's the link tree and there is a link to my website, to my Facebook, to all of the links that I have. And my uh, Instagram handle is Kasha Michaels Style and Kasha is spelled K-A-S-I-A. Thank you. Shelly, how can we continue to follow and support you? At Shelly Carlson and it's Shelly with a C, H-E-L-L-I-E, Carlson. Thank you so much. And don't forget, of course, to find and follow at Glam Hive and continue the conversation. Hashtag Glam Hive Live. I'm Jeslyn. I'm Jeslyn. And I'm so grateful for all of those who contributed to the conversation and participated. We're excited to continue a great day full of incredible panels. Again, special thanks to our presenting sponsor, Mary Kay. And Shelly and I will see you very soon when we talk the foundation for the foundation of your outfit. <laughs> Stay safe. Bye, ladies. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you.